Hi guys, welcome back to the channel again. In today's video, we are going to look at Polybar on i3 and we are going to customize our theme. Let's get going. So here we are starting from where we left off. So we have here our i3 blocks bar already configured. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and install Polybar and configure it to our liking. So let's go ahead and install Polybar. Polybar is available in the AUR. So let's pull up a terminal and let's type in yay s and then Polybar and it enter. Now we have two repositories. The first one Polybar is the stable version and the second repository is the development version. I'm going to go for the default version here, which is the first repository. So I'll just hit enter and I don't want to remake the dependencies after the install. So I'll just hit enter here. And if it to show none, and it enter. Now we enter the sudo password and proceed with the installation. So it's going to take some time to download and compile Polybar and I'll be back when it's done. And so the installation is done. Now we can see here there is a small warning at the end of the file, which is saying that the Polybar example file is using these three kinds of fonts. We have TTF Unifont, CG Git and Xorg fonts Mish. So I rather want to go ahead and install them now so that Polybar displays correctly when we run it afterwards. So let me clean up the terminal and install the fonts. So first one, let's install the XOR fonts by typing in sudo pacman dash s and then xorg dash fonts dash mish and hit enter. Proceed with the installation. That should be done fairly quickly. There you go. Now let's install the other two, which are both in the AUR. So we'll type in yay dash s. Well, the first one is cg-git and the other one is ttf-unifont and it enter. Now, difference is to show here none and it enter. And we need to import this key, so we just accept the default here. And now it's going to take a moment to download and install, so I'll be back in a second. There you go, the installation is done, so let's clean up the terminal. Now we installed the Polybar and Polybar created a configuration file in the user directory, which we need to copy into our home directory. But before we copy the file, we need to create also the Polybar directory into our home directory. So let's do this by typing in mkdir.config and then slash Polybar and hit enter. Now we can copy the configuration file into this directory by typing in sudo cp slash user slash share slash doc, slash polybar, slash config. This is the name of the file. And we are going to copy this in our home directory, slash dot config, slash polybar, and hit enter. Now let's list the content of the polybar directory by typing in ls dash al dot config, slash polybar, and hit enter. And you can see there we have our configuration file. The problem is, as every other file we copied in here, it belongs to the root user. So we need to change permissions here so that we don't have to type every time sudo to make changes to the configuration file. So let's do this by typing in sudo chon for changing ownership. The username you want to have, it's mine. In this case, you replace, of course, accordingly. And the group name is the same. And then the name of the file is .config slash polybar slash config and hit enter now if we do again a listing of the file we will see it belongs to me and also to my group so everything looks good now let's have a look at the polybar website let's go to firefox here on workspace number two and i'll type in, in here polybar and hit enter click the first link and scroll down here you will see we have some informations available to us and here we can also go to the wiki. So I'll click here to the wiki link and then go to home. And these are some informations about Polybar and it explains us that the best way to launch Polybar is to execute a script and then put a link to the script in our i3 configuration file. So this is what we're going to do. You're going to copy this script here, which is the launch script available for us back to the terminal. We're going to create a script in the Polybar directory by typing in vim dot config slash polybar slash launch dot sh and hit enter. We'll paste in the content 
and we need to make a small change to this script in that actually the commands we have here are referring to polybar 1 and polybar bar 2. So these are the name of the bars. However, the configuration file we just installed has the name example. And we need to replace this, otherwise polybar will not be able to launch. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to select this line and delete it because we have only one bar. And we can replace this bar 1 with example which is the name of the example bar in our configuration file. And then we can save the file and exit Vim. Now we need to change the permissions of the script so that it can be executable. So to do this, we'll type in sudo chmod for change permissions plus x, the x is execute permission, and then dot config slash polybar slash launch dot sh and hit enter. Now, we need to put this script into our i3 configuration file. We have already the link for this in Firefox. Let's have a look. Let's go back here. We already executed the script here for execution permissions. And we need to put this command into our i3 configuration file. So let's copy this. Go back to the terminal and open up our configuration file. So we'll type in vim.config slash i3 slash config and hit enter. I go down to the end of the file. And I'll insert a new line here with the comment. I'm going to say polybar launch script. Go down one line and paste in the content. And this one is OK. But then we need to still do one thing before we save this file. And that is we need to go back to the place where our i3 status bar is because we need to comment those lines as we don't want to have the status bar available. So let's go back there, which is right up here. What we need to do here, we just need to put an hashtag because I don't want to delete them. I might want to go back to the i3 status bar one day, so I don't want to delete it. So I just need to put here one hashtag to comment the lines. Let me do this very quickly. There you go. Now we can save the file and exit Vim. Now if we relaunch i3 with mod shift R, polybar is appearing at the top. And as you can see, it displays with icons which are belonging to the CG fonts we just installed, and also the Unifont, which is displaying the volume bars. So now we can go ahead and configure our polybar. Before we do this, I want to change actually the desktop background of my installation. And that's because I want to show you after how you can match the colors to make a more consistent look with polybar. So let me go back shortly to my configuration file here. And we go down to the line where we have our wallpaper selected, which is down here. And I'm going to replace this photo with Arch2, which I already saved in my system, and then save the file and reload i3. And you can see we have our new wallpaper available to us there. So it's a nice wallpaper. You can find the link in the video description below as well. So let's open up the terminal again. And now let's go ahead and open our polybar configuration file. So we'll do this by typing in vim.config slash polybar slash config. And hit enter. So here we have our polybar configuration file. It is divided in several sections. The first one is the color section, which is right here. So this section is going to define the colors of your whole bar and also certain colors for the fonts and the backgrounds of the fonts. So, for example, here we have this variable is right now disabled because we want to use the background, which is the background of the polybar. We have the foreground color, which is the color of our font, in this case of the number one here. We have also some alternative colors and also some colors for the primary and secondary parameters. We're going to look at those in a second. Down here, we have the configuration of our bar itself, which is named example in this case. We can replace the name here, of course, and call it my bar. But then you would have to replace also the name in the configuration script for launching the bar that we edited before. So right now we can see the bar, it's 100% width. So it spreads across my entire screen. The height is 27. And then we have some radius here, which defines the rounded corners around the bar. And we have also the fixed center, which is set to false. We have also the background, which is taking actually the variable from this section here for the color section. In fact, the variable is set as colors, which refers to the module and background, which refers to the parameter under colors. And so this is how you can read this file. So everything which has, for example, this syntax refers to the module for the first part and refers to the parameter to the second part. So this is going to be so throughout the whole configuration file. 
Then we have some other things here. We can adjust the border size. We can adjust the left padding, the right padding. We're going to do this in a second. Here we have the fonts available to us in the system. So the fixed fonts is the font that you're seeing here, basically, the one that displays number one, two, vol, and so on. We have the uni font, which is displaying this bar here. And we have also the CG fonts, which is displaying these icons. The next section here is the module left, center, and right. And this is basically displaying the components or the module of the polybar in reference to the position. So for example, on the left side, you're going to display the i3 module or the BSPVM module, which is not anywhere available to us. So the i3 module is displaying here. In the center, we have MPD, but it's not working because I don't have it active in my system. And I'm going to remove that anyway. And on the right side, we have all other modules available. So, for example, we have the file system here, which is the one right here. We have also the ALSA, Pulse Audio, and so on. Some of them are not available because I don't have the packages installed or because I'm on a virtual machine, they're not going to be anywhere recognized. We have also the tray position, which is right now on the right side, which is going to display the icons, for example, like this Ethernet connection here. I don't like actually the tray icons here, and I'm going to disable that in a second. We have also the tray padding. Right now, it's a little bit more indented. And then we have also some other options, which are right now disabled. We have also here the modules configurations. So let's have a look at some of those. For example, this is the file system module, which is going to display, in this case, how much percent I used of the disk available I have. So right now you can see how it is composed. We have the type, we have the interval, we have the mount point, which is the root user. I have only this one in my system. And we have the label. This is basically what is going to be displayed in our polybar. We have also the foreground color, which, remember, is going to point back to our colors at the beginning of the configuration file. So every module is built like this, and every module has its own configuration options. What we can do, we can go back shortly to Firefox and have a look here. On the right side, we have a tree explaining us how every module is working. So, for example, if we want to have more information, let's say, about the i3 module, we can click here. And it's going to tell us exactly what every part of the module does. So, for example, we can change some of the things. We have also some additional formatting here. We can set icons for our workspaces, which we're going to do in a second. And they tell us how it's going to work. We can tell us which kind of options we have available. For example, for the label mode, we can choose between name, icon, index, and so on. Some of these are not present in the current module, but we can add them or delete them if we don't need them. So the help file is very simple to understand, and it shows you all the options available in your polybar. Now let's go back to the polybar, and let's start from the top. So the first thing I want to do, I want to change the color of my polybar, and I want to make my polybar looking more consistent to the colors of my wallpaper. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll need to first find out which numbers the colors have that we can put into our configuration file. So how do we do this? Well, the easiest way for me is to go back to Firefox, so I'll go to workspace number two, and I'm going to install here a small add-on for Firefox, which is called Colorzilla. So let me do this. Let me go to a new tab and type in Colorzilla and then Firefox, and hit enter. I'm going to click the first option here for this extension, and I'm going to click Add to Firefox. I'm going to click Add, and OK. Now we have Colorzilla here available to us. Now we can close this page up, and this one as well. And here I have a website where I downloaded my wallpaper before. So what I can do here, I can display the bigger photo, and then I can pick with Colorzilla, for example, the color of this gray part, which I want to use for polybar. So I'm just going to click on this color, and you can see here it's displaying Rapier. And we can go to the Colorzilla again, and to the color picker, and we can copy this value. So I'm just going to copy this, and then I'm going to go back to Polybar, and I'm just going to paste it in here. I'm going to delete these values, and just paste the value in here. There you go. So if we save the file and restart i3, now the color of the bar is matching this color. Now, it's a little bit too solid for me, and I would like to really make it transparent. So how can we use transparency here in Polybar? Well, we can the same way we use it for the i3 configuration file. Only thing is that the transparency parameter, instead of at the end of the color, is going to be at the beginning of the color. So let's go back shortly to our Firefox. And I'll open up here a new tab and type in here, transparency, hex, and hit enter. 
or click the first link, which we already used in the previous video. Here we can choose the level of opacity we want to give to our polybar. So let's say, for example, I want to give 20% opacity. So let me go back to the terminal. And I'll type here in front of the color, 3.3. And then again, I save the file and restart polybar. And now I have a fairly transparent polybar, which is looking much better to me. Now let's change the background alternative color, which is the color on the background of the number one there. This gray is not really matching the theme. So I want to give actually the same color, but with a different amount of transparency. And so I'm going to point here and replace this with BF and then the same color you used before. So BF it's for 75% transparency. And then I'll type in the color as I did before. Now I can save the file again and reload polybar. Now to me, this looks much better. Now the next step, I want to change the foreground color, which has to be white. This is my taste. Of course, you can change according to what you like, but I'm going to move down here to the line and change this to the white color, which I know is six times F. And again, I can save the changes and reload polybar. And to me, this looks a little bit better. I'm going to do the same for the alternative foreground because the white text, it's easier to visualize for me. So I replace this color with again C6F and save again the file and reload I3. And now we have also on the active workspaces, the white color. Now let's change the primary color, which is going to be the yellow underline under the number one. I want to replace it actually with this light blue here behind. So let me go back to Firefox and I'm going to go back to my picture here and pick Colorzilla again and click on the color. And you can see we have the color there. So I can copy it. If I go to the color picker, I can copy this color, go back to my terminal. And I'm going to replace this color with the one I just copied like so. Now, I don't want to give any transparency to that because I want it to be very clear. Then I can save the file and reload i3. And that looks to me more coherent. Now I'm going to change also to the secondary color here and I'm going to make it white again because it's much easier to see. And for the alert, I'm going to let the color as it is. I'm going to save the file and reload i3. There you go. Now we have everything set. So let's move down now to our bar. So this is going to define the shape of the bar. So the width 100% is fine for me. Of course, I wanted to take the whole screen. 27 is actually okay, but I want to make it a little smaller. So I'm just going to type here, let's say 20. And then I'll save the file and reload i3. And to me, this looks a little bit better. For the offset, that's fine with me. Now for the radius, we can change actually the look and feel of these round corners around. So you can change this according to your preferences. Now on this side, it doesn't appear much because it's matching the color of the background. So it's not really visible. But to be honest with you, I don't really like rounded corners. So I'm going to replace this six with a zero. And I'm going to make them completely squared. I save the file and reload i3. And I like this better. And I'm going to change still some other things afterwards to make it near to the side of the screen. But for now, let's continue. Now, let's change the line size. The line size defines the size of this line here under these icons. So two is actually okay. We can make it bigger if you like to. We can say, for example, let's make it four. And reload i3. You can see how it looks like. Now, the line color, it's going to bypass if each module defines its own color. Right now, the other modules are not using any line color. That's why this color doesn't appear, which is actually a red color. However, I want to change this if no other color is available. I want to actually use one of the colors of the theme. And for that, I'm going to use the color of the primary. And so I'm going to type in, in here 1B9FC6. And there you go. Now we can save the file and reload i3. There you go. Now let's change the border size. So the border size is this one right here that you really don't see that much. And I don't actually need to have that, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to replace this with a zero and then save the file and reload i3. And now the line is gone. Now for the padding, I'm going to choose here padding right just one. And while we're already here, I'm going to change also the margin of the module. Instead of two, I'm going to move it to one as well. Then we can save the file and reload i3. Now let's move down to the font section. So the fixed font is the font defining the text we see here on the polybar. The unifont is the one displaying these lines. 
and the CG fonts is the one displaying these icons. We can of course replace them. If you don't want to have these fonts, we can change them up. I'm going to replace this anyway with our font awesome icons afterwards, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Now let's move down here to the modules. So on the left, I have BSPVM and i3. Well, I don't have actually BSPVM right now, so I can delete this module and I'll just let i3. In the center here, I don't have MPD and I don't want to use MPD anyway. I'm going to replace MPD, let's say, with our X window. So I'll type in here X window. It's going to put here in the middle the title of the window we are in. And let's save the file for now and reload i3 to see how it looks like. There you go. Now, on the right side, the file system is fine. I don't want to have the X backlight there. And I don't need also neither. I already have Pulse Audio there. The keyboard is fine, although I don't use it that often, but it's fine. Memory is fine. CPU is fine. I don't need Wi-Fi because I don't have any Wi-Fi card here. For the Ethernet, that's fine. I'm going to take off the battery because I'm not on a laptop. And I'll take off also the temperature because it's not working on my VM anyway. It might work after the box for you. And I'll leave the date and the power menu as they are. So I'll just save the file and reload i3. There you go. Now for the tray position, we can put it to the right where it's right now, or we can put it to the left, or we can disable it by typing in none. And this is what I'm going to do, as I don't want to have the tray anyway there. So I'm going to type in here none, and then save the file and reload i3. And that looks better to me. So because now the tray is gone, you see this one aligns too much on the right side. So what we can do, we can go back here to the padding and increase this to two, and then save the file. And that one looks better to me. Now, the last thing I want to do in this module is to put the separator here between modules. So to do this, I'm going to insert a line in here in Vim. And I'm going to type in here separator equal. And then I'm going to put here the pipe symbol. Then I'm going to save the file and reload i3. And now we have our separators there. Now let's move down here to our modules. I'm not going to touch the X window. That's fine with me. Now for the X keyboard, the only thing I want to do is to change the keyboard icon, which is going to be this format prefix. So what I'm going to do is to go back to Firefox and go to the cheat sheets that we have still here available to us. And I'm going to go here to the solid icons and I'm going to type in here keyboard. And we have here our keyboard. So I just copy this icon, go back to the terminal and I'm going to replace this and paste that in and delete and then I'm going to give a space and then save the file and see how it looks like when I reload i3 and you see what happens here the icon is not displayed and that's why we need to put here in our font section also the font awesome we are using in i3 so let's do this very quickly let's go back to the fonts and insert here and type in font dash three equal so the first one I want to put in is the font awesome five and then free. We have three types of font awesome in the system and then the pixel size I'm typing pixel size equal 12 and I'm going to give the offset to two. And now on the next line, I'm going to type in font dash four equal font awesome five free and then solid. This is the second type we have in the system a colon and then the same size. So pixel size equal 12 offset two. The last one is font dash five equal font awesome five brands. This is the third kind. And again, pixel size equal 12 and two. Then we can save the file and reload i3. And you see now our icon is appearing beside the keyboard. So let's go back there to our module, which is down here. So we could change, for example, now also the underline, which is picking up from the color section on the top of the file. If you don't want to have the standard underline, you can change the color here, for example. As a label layout, it's going to show the layout of the keyboard, which is in this case CH. And then you have also some extra options here for the padding. The rest is fine for me. So you can change this, of course, according to your need. But I'm going to move down here to the file system. So right now it's showing us the mount point, which is the root directory. 
and the label is showing basically the mount point and the percentage used. So we are seeing that here, the mount point and the percentage used. I want to actually change this. And as for the label mounted, I want to show here an HDD icon. So let me go back to Firefox and type in here HDD. And let's take our icon and copy it. Go back to the terminal and I'm going to paste it in right here and also give a space. The thing is, I don't want to show the mount point and the percentage used. I want to see how many gigabytes I have still available. How do we do that? Well, let me go back to Firefox and let's go back to our polybar. Let's scroll up here and let's click on the disk module, which is right here under file system. And so let's scroll down here and see what we have. Here you can see also if you want to show other mount points, for example, if you have home or var. But here we see which labels we can use to show up in the polybar. So you can see we have, for example, here mount point percentage free of total. We could change this like this, but we have all these availables. So we can choose also between mount point, between type, FS name, and so on. The one I want to use is actually free. So let me go back to the terminal and replace all of this with percent sign and then free and then a percent sign again and we can save the file and reload i3 and now you can see we have here still 132 gigabytes with our icon so i like this better but if you don't like this you can change how it looks by looking at the parameters you can set in the polybar configuration file i'll let the rest as it is and i'll move on to the next module so i don't have bspvm installed so i can skip this module anyway and I go down to the module i3. This is the one we need to configure. So I will let here the labels as they are, or these are fine for me, but what I wanna change is actually our workspaces. I don't like to have this one and two here. I wanna have my icons, what we installed before in the i3 blocks. How do we do this? Well, we need to insert some line and change some things. So let me do this very quickly. Let's go here and insert a line. And we need to specify the workspace icons here in the system. And the syntax to do that is the following, ws for workspace, dash icon, and then dash zero, which is gonna represent the first workspace in your i3 installation. I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but this is how it works. Equal, then we need to define the index of the workspace. In this case is one, because it's the first workspace, a semicolon, and then the icon that we would like to use in case we choose to show the icon. So I want to use for the first workspace our terminal icon. So I go back to Firefox and go back to the cheat sheet and type in, in here terminal. And we have our terminal icon here. So I'm just going to copy this, go back to the terminal and paste that in. And there you go. Now I move down to the next line and I'll type in WS dash icon dash one, which is going to represent the second workspace equal to semicolon. Remember here we have Firefox. Let me copy again the Firefox icon. I'll go back to the brands icons here and search for Firefox. Then I'm going to copy the icon, go back to the first terminal and paste that in. And for the third workspace, I'm going to type in WS dash icon dash two equal three semicolon and then we need to find out again the Spotify icon so let me go back to Firefox one more time and I'll type in here Spotify which is right here go back to the terminal and paste that in now we can save the file but before restarting i3 we need to change something in our i3 configuration file for the workspaces so let me open up another terminal and I'll type in here vim.config slash i3 slash config and hit enter and I'll go up until I find my workspaces right up here because we need to change these parameters if you decide to have only the icon in polybar we need to change how this is typed in in the workspace because it's going to pull the information from here and if this syntax is not correct it's not going to display correctly in polybar so what I'm going to do here I'm going to remove the colon and the icon and I'm just going to put in the double quotes there and I'm going to do the same for the other two workspaces. Then save the file and reload i3. Now I can close the second terminal. Now the icons, as you notice, didn't appear here and that's because we need to tell Polybar to do that. Right now you see here the label focused is the index. So the index is basically the number of the workspace which our i3 configuration has. 
If we want to display the icons instead of the index, we need to replace this label. So let's type in here icon. And let's do the same for the other, also for the inactive workspaces. So we'll replace this with icon as well. And we'll do the same for the active workspaces on unfocused monitors, even I don't have one, but just to make it consistent. And the same goes also for the urgency hint. So I'll type in here icon. Now we can save the file and we can reload i3. And you see our icons are working, but the terminal is not. And that's because we have to exit one time i3 for the changes to take effect. So let me exit Vim and exit i3. And again, I'll type in start x. And now you can see the icon appears correctly. So let's open up again another terminal. And let's open Firefox. You can see now also the urging workspace of an icon there. And when we move there, our icon is present. So I like this look better, and I'm going to keep it this way. I can cancel these tabs and reopen my sessions because I need to have them afterwards and go back to the terminal. Now let's continue configuring our polybar. So I'm not going to use the MPD module and the X backlight neither. For the CPU here, I'm going to change this icon. And to do this, I'm going to go to Firefox one more time. And I'm going to go to solid icons here and look for microchip, which is right here. So I'm going to copy here the icon, go back to the terminal. And I'm going to replace here this format prefix by pasting that in and removing this icon. Then again, save the file and reload i3. And we have now our processor icon in there. I'm going to do the same for the memory. I don't like that one here. It's much too small for me. So I'll go back to Firefox and I'll search for memory. And we have that right here. So I'm just going to copy this and go back to my terminal and replace the icon. There you go. And we can actually delete the old one as well. And I'm going to give it also a space. And then I can save the file and reload i3. And there you go, the icon is now there. Now let's go to Wi-Fi. Well, I don't care about this because I don't have Wi-Fi in my machine. Now for Ethernet, I'm going to replace also this icon with a network icon, which maybe looks a little better than this one. So let's go back to Firefox and type in network. We have our network icon right here. So I'm going to copy this, go back to the terminal, and I'm going to paste this one right in. And I'm going to delete the old icon. And maybe I'm going to give it a space and then reload i3, and there you go. And then let's go down again. We have also one for the date. So the interval is now five, and that's fine. We can replace this with one, but I don't see the seconds here. So I'm gonna change the format prefix in here. So I'm gonna go to Firefox again and look for clock, which is not the user clock. I'm gonna select the next one right here. Copy it, go back to the terminal and paste it in right here and delete the old one. There you go. And then save the file and reload i3. Well, that one looks much better. Now there is still one thing I need to do is to change also the icon for the power menu, which is not this one right here. Here we have the pulse audio. Well, we can change this one as well, which is right here under label volume. So let's say I want to change this maybe with some musical notes. Let me go back here to Firefox and search for music. And there you go. We have here a music icon. So let me copy this and go back to the terminal and replace this and paste in the icon. Well, it looks a little weird here, but when we save the file and reload i3, it's displaying correctly. So that's fine with me. So let's go down one more and see what we have. So I'm not using the ALSA module, so I don't care about this. I don't have the battery neither, but here again, you can change the icon if you don't like the standard ones. And the temperature I don't have. And for the power menu here, I want to change the label open. Well, this one is not anyway displaying so correctly. So let me change this. Let me go back to Firefox and search for power. We have here a power off icon, which is fine. So I'm going to right click here, copy it and go back to the terminal. And I'm going to replace this by pasting in and deleting the old one, saving the file and restart i3. Now, I need to change also the menus here because this menu is interactive. If I click here, you see it appears with options for rebooting and power off, but it's not working properly right now. So I want to have it much more simple. So I want to have it when I click here, it's going to show cancel, reboot and power off. That's all. And then when I click the option, it's just going to do the action. So what I'm going to do here for execution when clicking reboot, I'm going to type in system CTL reboot. 
and deleting menu one here, which I don't need. And for power off, I wanted to execute system CTL power off and delete this one right here. And I don't need the other two menus here, so I can just delete them up. And there you go. And we have nothing else to configure here. So our polybar looks good. The only thing I see that I don't like right now is the line size, which is too thick for me. So let me go back here to line size and change this to two. Then save the file and reload i3. And this one looks a little bit more subtle to me. Now we configured all the modules available already as an example, but what if we want to also add some more modules? For example, in the i3 blocks, we added a module for Spotify, remember? Well, we can do this also in Polybar. Let me go back to Firefox and I'm gonna search in a new tab for Polybar, Spotify, and hit enter. And let's click on the first link here. And we have a very nice script and module we can copy in our polybar configuration. So here you can see we have the module that we can copy into polybar. And I'll do this in a second. But first I want to copy the script. So the script is right here, Spotify underscore status. So I'm going to copy this text and go back to the terminal. Now let me open up a new terminal. And let's create this script there. So let's type in vim.config slash polybar slash Spotify underscore status dot py and hit enter. We can paste in the script and then save the file and exit vim. Now we need to make the script executable again. So we'll type in sudo chmod plus x and then dot config slash polybar slash Spotify underscore status dot py and hit enter. Enter our sudo password. And there you go. And now we can go back to Firefox and to the previous page, we can copy the module and go back to the first terminal. We can close this one up and we can put the module wherever we want to. I'm gonna put it on the top because it's easier than for me to know. So let's go right here after the polybar configuration and I'll paste in the module. And the only thing I need to do here is to replace the path to the script. So I'm going to type in here and replace the path, which is slash home slash hermano slash dot config slash polybar slash Spotify underscore status dot py. Now we can save the file and reload i3. Now we need to still tell i3 where to put this module. So I'm going to put it in the center. And the module name is Spotify, as we see here. So I'm going to type in here, Spotify. Then again, I'm going to save the file and reload i3. Now let's try to open Spotify. Let's go to the third workspace. Uh, let's just play something here. And as you can see, it appears here on top of Polybar. So everything looks good. So let's go back to the terminal. You can see also here for the format prefix, if you don't like to have this icon here, this music icon, you can replace it also, for example, with the Spotify icon, if you prefer. Well, let's do that while we are at it. Let's go back to the cheat sheet here and go back to brands and search for Spotify. And again, I'm going to click the icon here and copy it. I can go back to the terminal and I'm going to replace this and paste that in. I want to have this space right here. Now create a space after the icon. There you go. And then I'm going to save the file and restart i3. And now Spotify is there. So this one looks better to me. Now we copied a module from the internet, but what about if you want to create a module our own? Well, we have all the information needed in the Polybar project. And let's put it in practice. Let's create here a new script from scratch, which is going to check for updates for our Arch installation. So let's do that here. I'm going to enter here a new module. And I'm going to type in here square bracket and then module. We need to define the name of the module. And I'm going to call it pacman-updates. And I close the square bracket. So this is the name of the module. Now it's a custom script, so I can type in type equal custom slash script. Go down to the next line and we put the command we need to execute. So we'll type in exec for execute equal. The program is check updates. So I'll type in here check updates and then a pipe. Because we want to display how many updates we have, we need to use the wc function or word count function. 
and we're going to display the number of it. And then in the next line, we're going to say the interval. The interval for updates checking, I'm going to say 1000. That's enough for me. On the next line, we're going to say the label. The label, it's going to be updates and then a colon. And then we need to specify the output because we want to see how many updates we have. So it's percent sign and then output and a percent sign again. Now in the next line, we're going to define the color of the font. So we'll type in format dot foreground and then equal. We're going to use the variable of our polybar configuration. So dollar sign, this is the variable colors. Remember, this is under the colors module dot foreground, which in our case is the white color. We could use also the background, but I don't need to do this. Now on the next line, let's say we want to have an icon for our update. So we can type in format dash prefix and then equal double quote. And let's look for a nice icon in our Firefox here. Let's type in arrow dash circle. And we have an up arrow here. That's the one I want. So I just right click here, go back to the terminal and paste that in and give it a space and double quotes. And I want to give also a red color to this icon because there are updates. I want them to pop up to my eyes. So I'll type in format dash prefix dash foreground equal. We'll give the red color, which is hashtag FF0000. Now we can save the file and we need to put the module here in our polybar. So I want to replace actually Spotify with Pacman dash updates. And I'm going to put Spotify on the top of the right side. And now we can save our file and reload i3. It's going to take a moment for the updates to show up. And there you can see we have 148 updates with our red icon. So I'm done actually with my customization. This is just an example, but it shows you how actually it's pretty easy to configure Polybar. We created now a new module for the Pac-Man updates, but you can use the same parameters, for example, if you want to configure new modules. And again, I encourage you to go to the Polybar GitHub project to see all the parameters available. And if you have any question, let me know in the comments below. This is actually my customization of Polybar. I'm using this with i3 on Arch Linux and it works absolutely flawlessly. So this is how I configure Polybar with i3 on my theme. I definitely encourage you to look at the GitHub project for Polybar. There are so many options available. It's really flexible and it's really nice to work with. I hope you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you soon in the next one.